Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an Asus ROG Zephyrus Duo 16 gaming laptop, the GX650 series. I'm going to show you how to get inside and take you on a teardown or disassembly tour of the various components you can access once you're in. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to flip your computer over to access the bottom case screws. Now you're going to have to remove all of these screws. Keep in mind this one in the middle, you're going to need a small flat pry tool to pop up this guard to get at that screw. And the screw in the bottom right near the green arrow, that screw doesn't actually come out, but it will lift your bottom plate up a little bit as you can see in this picture. And that's where you would start prying it up. You would then take a small flat, preferably plastic pry tool. I say plastic because it'll scratch your case a lot less than a metal one will. And again, starting in this corner, you're going to go across the seam and separate the panel from the rest of your computer. Don't put your pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components. Keep it on the edge. Go slow and careful, but firm. And if you get stuck going in one direction, stop. Start here again. Go in the other direction until you get that bottom case off. Once your bottom panel has been removed, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, I have it sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging things in your computer when you're working on it. If you guys would like any help with tools or supplies for your project, There'll be a link below in the description. It'll show you a list of tools and supplies that I use in my shop. Beneath that link, there will be another link, and that will give you a list of all of the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer. Now, this battery had a part number of C41N2103. This is a 90 watt hour battery, 15.4 volts. I will have that information below in the description if you're looking for your own replacement. But again, I will have a replacement option for this battery in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts for this computer. Now, before I touch anything in a computer, the first thing I do is remove or at least unplug my battery. A computer is safer to work on when as little power as possible is running through it. To remove your battery, you have five screws. This one up here near the green arrow, this will have a warranty void sticker on it. This black sticker with a red triangle, that's a warranty void sticker. You're going to see those at various places in the computers you work on. What it means is that if you access that screw and you go past that sticker, you're going to void part or all of your warranty. So just keep that in mind when proceeding into your computers when you see these stickers. Uh, so I carefully took it off, carefully put it off to the side because I'm going to put it back when I'm done. But after taking those screws out, your battery plugs into the motherboard right here. And this is a snap connector, not a plug. So this white clip right there, you just pull that up and off of the motherboard and that's how you release it from the battery. And I guess the last thing to shout out about this kind of operation, if you're here because your computer is not turning on, um, it could be a bad battery, but it could be something else. A laptop should still turn on and work even with a bad battery if the power adapter is plugged in and healthy. If your computer is not turning on, there could be a different cause other than just a bad battery. There will be a video tutorial link below in the description. It'll be a troubleshooting video showing you how to find out why a laptop's not turning on and how to fix it. You have two RAM sodium slots right here. This will be DDR5 RAM, 3800 megahertz, dual channel mode. Um, I will have all the RAM specs below in the description if you're looking for your own replacements. But I will also have some RAM upgrade and replacement options below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts. I believe this computer has a max RAM capacity of 64 gigabytes, and many of you stock will have either one or two 16 gigabyte sticks when you buy the computer. So I will have a replacement 16 gigabyte stick so in that list. I will also have a 32 gigabyte kit, which will have two 16 gigabyte sticks if you're looking to replace both. And then I will have a 64 gigabyte kit set 
uh, if you're looking to max out your RAM, that'll have two uh, 32 gigabyte sticks, uh, which will max out your RAM to 64. The way you operate RAM is there's spring-loaded metal arms, one on either side. You gently pry those apart from each other, away from the RAM stick. The RAM will then release, and many times it'll even pop up a little bit. You can then grab it and pull it out of this port right there. And then to get the RAM stick back in, you would put it into this port. And as you'll notice, there's a long part here and a shorter part there. That means you can't put it in upside down. You can only get it in the correct way. And then once it's in and flush and this gold section is nice and straight across, then you just press down in the center and those arms will latch onto it and hold it in place. And I guess as a last side note about this, I always recommend uh, my customers and my viewers to max out their RAM. It's one of the cheapest and easiest ways that you can increase your computer's speed and performance. As far as storage, this computer has two M.2 PCIe NVMe drives. You have this one here, which you should have a solid state drive in there stock. And then you have this port here, solid state drive two right there. You have this port here that you can add an additional solid state drive. So most of you will have, I think a 512-ish gigabyte uh, solid state drive here stock. So below in the description in that list I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts, I'll try to have a, a, a replacement 500 gigabyte stick, but I'll try to have an upgrade uh, one terabyte and, and a two terabyte in case you wanna upgrade. And these take gen four solid state drives. And I will have all that solid state drive information below in the description in case you're looking for your own replacements. So the way that you operate this is a single screw right there. You take that screw up and you can release the solid state drive. Same thing here, there's a screw right there. Uh, as you can see here, there's a thermal pad place. There will also be a thermal pad under this solid state drive in the same location uh, just to assist with heat transfer out. And a couple last side notes with an operation like this. If you're replacing a bad solid state drive, uh, most likely the data on that drive may still be recoverable even if you can't access it from another computer. Uh, they have data recovery services and companies that do that. Uh, that may be able to get your data out. I will have information below in the description on a company that I use for data recovery if you need it. And the last side note in this operation, if you are installing a new drive, you probably will also need to install an operating system to that drive when you're done. Uh, there will be two video tutorial links below in the description. One will show you how to install Windows 10 onto an ASUS computer. The other will show you how to install Windows 11. Your Wi-Fi card is over here on the left of my screen underneath this solid state drive. So there's a screw right here on the left. You're gonna undo that screw and you can pull this solid state drive out of this port right here. And then the Wi-Fi card is right here underneath it. You will unscrew it from the top and pull it out of this port right here. I will have the Wi-Fi specs below in the description if you're looking for your own replacement, but I will also try to include a Wi-Fi replacement option below in that list I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. And I guess the last thing to shout out about a Wi-Fi card replacement, if you're having Wi-Fi issues in your computer, if you're not able to see your networks or sign on to them, uh, it could be a bad Wi-Fi card, in which case you would need to replace it, but it could be something else. So I will have a video tutorial below in the description. It'll help you troubleshoot that type of issue with Wi-Fi so you can rule some other things out, possibly fix it before getting in here to do an invasive repair like this. You have your speaker here towards the right of my screen and the speaker here towards the left of my screen. So this speaker on the left, the wire runs all along here. This is the wire you had to unattach from the battery in order to get it out. And it runs here to this plug. And this speaker here has a white and blue wire that joins it here in the same plug. Now these speakers are not screwed down. You see these red rubber washers that just go over these posts for sound insulation. That's, so you can just wiggle those speakers up. You can get those up, they're not screwed down. Also these wires are very fragile, so definitely do not pull on the wires. Use your fingernails on either side of that plug or a pry tool to wiggle that out of the port in the motherboard. 
So fairly simple operation to get at those speakers. I guess the last thing to mention with this type of an operation, if you're here because you're having sound quality issues, if your speakers are not sounding very good in different types of software, um, if you can't get it to stabilize, it could be a driver issue or a system issue. It may not necessarily be that your speakers are bad and need to be replaced. So I will have a video link below in the description. It'll be a tutorial showing you how to update your system and update all your drivers just to rule that out before you get in here to attempt a physical replacement. Your heat sink fan assembly is up here. It goes over your CPU, GPU. It goes to these vents to get the heat out. These vents over here uses these two fans. So to get these fans unplugged, you're gonna go at the screws that hold the fan down. These two on the right, these two on the left, and the fan itself on the right side plugs into the motherboard here. These are very fragile wires. Definitely do not pull on the wires to unplug that. Use your fingernails or a pry tool to get that plug out of its port on the motherboard. Same for this plug over here. Once you've unplugged the fans, you can work on your heatsink if you're looking to get in here. Uh, a couple side notes with getting this heatsink up. First of all, you see this sticker right here. Same thing that we dealt with near the battery. This is a warranty void sticker. So again, this will void part or all of your warranty uh, depending on which sticker it is. You have to consult your warranty. But again, just a word of caution, be careful with these type of stickers. The next thing I'll caution you on is if you are for any reason, I, I don't know why you're here. Um, if your computer's overheating, you wanna clean out the fans, replace a component. Uh, for whatever reason you're here, if you ever expose the thermal agents uh, to air when you're taking off your heat sink, you're gonna wanna reapply them. This applies to thermal paste, liquid metal. Anytime you expose what's in here to air, it, it should be reapplied. Uh, so when you take this off, you have these four screws here, these four screws here, and this model computer, many of you will have liquid metal instead of traditional thermal paste in your computer. So consult your manual, make sure you know what you have, because if you have thermal paste, you probably don't want to replace it with liquid metal and, and vice versa. If you have liquid metal, you probably don't want to replace it with thermal paste. If anything, you can replace it with a thermal pad or you should reapply liquid metal. So below in the description, in the list of tools and supplies for your computer project, I will have several options of thermal paste, liquid metal, and thermal pads, depending on what's best for your model computer that you're working on. And I guess the last thing to shout out is that if you need help, to reapply the liquid metal or reapply thermal paste, whatever you're dealing with, there'll be a video tutorial below in the description on how to fix an overheating computer. And that'll show you how to clean all the old stuff off and how to reapply the right amount because you don't want to apply too much. It can end up locking heat in uh, versus facilitating its transfer out. And, and as far as liquid metal, if you use too much, it could leak out of where it's supposed to be and you could short out things on your motherboard so you definitely want to do it right thanks again so much for watching uh please remember to like and share if this helped you out if you think it can help someone else out and feel free to subscribe if you enjoy diy computer content like this or if you just want to keep me on hand to answer any of your future computer questions i do try to answer all questions throughout my channel at least a couple times a day also, feel free to check out the related link section below in the description. From time to time, I do try to add things in there that I think will help you uh, with your general computer life, make it more productive, more enjoyable. So thanks again for watching, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.